Hey guys, it's Justin back with Engineer's Perspective. I'm doing a sharpening today, or a little tip repair rather, on this Victorinox Grand Matri Santoku. I've actually reground this one, so it's quite a bit thinner behind the edge. Um, probably in the ballpark of 10 thousandths, eight to 10 thousandths right now, down from what was probably like 14 or something, I don't really remember to be honest. But the first thing that happened after I did that is my, the knife was laying down and it got banged into a metal thermos and the tip got a little bit, a little bit wonky. This is just me from doing a bad job grinding it. You can't really tell, but there's a good 16th of an inch of wonky tip. So I've got the 400 grit super vitrified diamond water stone here and we're going to do that tip repair. So I'm going to be bringing the spine down to the tip instead of grinding the tip up because I want the flat profile. So I just wanted to show this. We'll do a full sharpening on it too. Try to look in the light. Looks like we're about halfway there. I'm just going to try to start feathering it in a little bit too, so work in the higher parts. This is a super hard stone, so you don't really have to worry about gouging it. All right, so I've fixed the tip, but you can see that the profile is pretty wonky. So now I need to take out some meat here and kind of feather it back in. because it almost recurves back at the tip right now. Let's fix that. The steel is like 56 to 58 Rockwell X50 CRM will be 15. So it's not super hard or anything. Well, I say that looks pretty good. You can see it has a nice swoop down. Maybe I might have taken off more material than I needed to up here because sometimes it's a little bit flatter of a swoop, but you can see it's a nice swoop all the way down into the tip there. And the tip is fixed now. So there you go. That's a little bit of tip repair. If you have a super bent up tip and then you can see all of the swarf. I'm going to rinse it off really quick and you'll see that there's no load up. And this stone is getting a little bit dark after about 50 sharpenings. There's a getting to be a tiny bit, but from that sharpening, you can see it's not all glazed over. So with that, it's actually decently sharp, but I'm gonna sharpen it for you guys. So I'm gonna run it over this granite block down here at the bottom. We're gonna go pretty thick angle, 17 to 18 degrees probably. Actually, it might have been thinner than what it was. I might have had it closer to 20. This is the kind of knife that I get really good performance out of by 
dropping the bevel lower than what the steel can handle and then uh, micro beveling it on a Spyderco sharp maker. Makes for really easy maintenance that way too. But it should hold the 17 to 18 degree edge. deburring passes. It's adequate. I'm going to wash it off over here. I'm jumping straight up to the Shapton Pro 5K. getting any of those 400 grit diamonds on my fingers or on the stone. I've done this jump up to a Shapton glass 8k before and it worked didn't remove scratch, all the scratches, but the performance of the edge was very good. You can actually see a chunk of the burr. Oh, just fell off. There it is right there. There's a chunk of the burr that came off. You can definitely hear it. A little bit more. It's not much new burr that's getting generated. Starting to wonder if I had an angle inconsistency on that first stone. There you go, it's feeling better. I'm just gonna start stropping it out to get max refinement from this stone. I'm just gonna do this quick. Just make sure that the burr has indeed been flipped. or so five really starting to get into the light pressure this is just looking for max refinement sorry for the little break there I had to take a moment so I'm just gonna Finish my stropping. Very light pressure now. Oops. So with soft steel like this, you can do those motions all day long and you'll never fully deburr. I mean, it feels sharp. You know, it'll look sharp too, but there is still burr, so let's take care of that. So we've, you know, alternated sides to minimize that burr and refine it as much as possible, but now we got to get rid of it. So with these kind of steels, I like to get mechanical with it. So I've got the scratchy side of a Scotch Brite here. 
I'm just gonna make sure let me wash this blade off real quick. I don't want there to be grit in my pad there. So I'm just gonna get that out of there. So I'm just gonna kind of very lightly And this rough texture really kind of grabs onto that burr. And I'm just trying to take some off, but really just deform it. I want it all kinds of snuggly and bent up. I don't want this like super gently, slightly sloped off to the side burr. Is, what I'm, is what's in my mind. Feel what we've done. Okay, I can feel a drop in keenness that the burr can give. So I think I'm relatively happy there. And now I normally like to kind of get the slurry and swarf off my stone. Is now I'm gonna do a same angle or slightly higher edge lead. And that's why we want that burr snuggly and all deformed. So it's just easier to capture it with these edge leads. That feels very good. Feels very clean. This is very light pressure, less than the weight of the knife. That feels good. All right. Dry that off. You could definitely strop it right now if you wanted. But actually, I'm just going to do a little bit of polishing on the back here. Kind of break over the this edges here that got a little bit sharp. There we go. I've got some slightly wet, really messed up newsprint. But you can see that it's very sharp. It's pretty hard to cut this stuff when it's like in that condition, but there you go. That's that. So super sharp, super easy, and uh, nice and cleaned up tip now. So it's ready to rumble. So that's all I've got for today. Have a good one. Bye.